Okay, to make this nice, quick, and simple, the way to clean the Maximus 9 Extreme board, there's obviously a ton of screws. I mean, there is like this crazy amount. As you can see, I marked it earlier from the first time I took it apart, medium, long. There's different sizes, different grades that I was using. But I found it a lot easier way is you can just draw the block, okay? Take them all apart, put the actual screws through the paper. As you can see, here's like the last one right here. Take it out and put it through the hole. Like I obviously can't do it on camera because I need my second hand, but you put it through the paper and that's exactly the correlation of where it was when you're taking it apart. So this makes the clean, cleaning the block super easy. This is the first step. I'm gonna start taking these apart, taking the block out, taking everything apart. And we're gonna go through there. I'm gonna show you how to clean it and then how to reassemble everything. This is going to be the first stage I did. So I'm gonna put number one, right? This is the first stage. It's the first level, everything that comes apart. The next time where I take all these pieces off that I can and I can no longer take it apart is when I'll start a second piece of paper. You don't put everything on one, then you'll start a second piece of paper and you'll go from there. So stay tuned and we're gonna get this done really fast and I'll show you how to do it. Really quickly here to all your naysayers, for those of you that have seen my video of the Primo Chill causing issues, that's what the Primo Chill fluid did to my block in just, um, I think just four days. Um, keep in mind, this is because I had a silver coil in there and I was running my pump at 80%. Some people are saying that it's because of the coil. Primo Chill themselves said it was because of the coil. Some guys said that, hey, like I, I was using coils, but I was running my pump really fast. I mean, I wasn't using coils, but I was running my pump fast and Primo Chill told them that, hey, it's because you're running your pump too fast. So that was from the Primo Chill view. That's what it did. Prior to this, I had distilled water and it was crystal clear. So yay, that's what we're taking this apart. So I'll be right back and we're gonna start tearing this whole thing apart. Okay, the next stage, there's gonna be four screws. There's two short ones here and two long ones here. So I'm gonna write stage two. Excuse my crappy drawing, I'm just trying to get a rough idea. Um, This proves to show that it doesn't matter how good you draw, you can just kind of draw it. So up, I always have my, the way you're looking at the block pointing up. I always revert the block the exact same way. I never twist it odd angles, so I always know which way the screws go in case my drawing doesn't make any sense. But there's my four screws. Two of them are really long. I don't know if you can see that or not, but two of them are long. And two of them are going to be tiny little stubs. So just poke them through, and then this should come off. And it's just an aluminum film with like some acrylic or whatever that plastic is. Yeah, that's what happened with that Primo Chill view. Anyways, this right here is already gonna be number three. So I'm gonna take all these apart and come back. So this should be stage number three. You should have five screws, one, two, three, four, five. They're all pretty long. One, two, three, four, and five. That's all five of them. At this point, the, yep, there it is. The acrylic should separate from the rest of the block. And there is a bit of wiring right here. So I'm just gonna give you an idea of what you're looking at. See all that? This is the main compartment. So from here on out, oh good, I can set it down. So at this stage, you're gonna be taking out the LED strip right here. You have two temperature sensors. You have the water flow meter. You have um, one, yeah, just a single O-ring. And there's a secondary O-ring over here. They're pretty easy to find out where they go. That one actually goes right here. This guy actually goes there. Um, they're pretty easy to find where they go. You have this little guy right here, I believe. I'm not even gonna guess what that is. I'm not gonna act like I know everything. You have your LED connector and your PWM connector right there. You have a little control system and there's a cutout right there. So it's, it's very obvious where the stuff goes back again. But if you want, you can take a picture of this like right when you took it apart so you know where everything goes. Then at these guys they just come right out there you can see that they just come right out the orientation as long as you don't bend these wires out of place like kind of try to leave them where they're at it's super easy to find where everything goes again this guy just comes right out of place as well just it lips out and that little that little plastic pin there's a hole in the acrylic oh sorry about the focus the plastic pin goes into a hole in the acrylic and that's that and there's one two three four there should be five screws or yeah one two three, four, all six, five, six screws that we're gonna take out, that's gonna be number four. So this is number three. I'm gonna to try to take everything out as much as I can. And then I'm gonna to go to number four from there. 
Okay, it's going to be step four. I quickly removed the screws, all six, I put them in there. I think they're all long screws. But I noticed that I couldn't pull any of this out because that sensor, whatever was, behind that. So at this point, you should be able to lift it. See that? Be able to lift the whole thing apart. And there's that other sensor right there, that wire. You have to push it through the back end. I took this apart once before. But on the back end, there's going to be a little plastic square you should have seen in the very beginning. I should have taken that one screw out after you take the water block out, the center piece, with the fins. That guy, after you take it out, there's supposed to be a plastic piece you take apart. Um, probably should do that first prior to taking all these other steps because there's fluid in here. If you don't have any fluid left in yours, I have a little bit of mine. I have to clean it all out. But if you don't have anything, you can go ahead and flip everything and take that out. For me, I got to dry it and then I'll get to that point. So when you flip the block over, you'll find this piece, the Bitphoenix little logo on there. But in that center piece right there, it actually houses this sensor. I'm not sure what it does, but it's chilling out over there through this hole right here. And at this point, you should honestly, oh, there we go. Should be able to lift it and all the block pieces come out. At this point, you can pull out these final two O-rings. Whatever, I'll throw that one my cleaning bill as well that's number four we're done all done with screws we can take the parts out you can fit washers around that guy take these i mean the o-rings you can take those out and then you can fit this sensor through that hole if i can do this with one hand fit it through a hole and bam now you got your acrylic piece you got all your steel pieces all this should separate from everything else if you wanted to right there right there i'm going to leave these two together because i don't want to take that apart and figure all that crap out because i can clean this and leave all this attached or you can take the pins out right there i'm going to leave all that as one piece i'm going to take all this with warm water soap solution i got to take an o-ring out right there as well warm water soap solution and a used toothbrush and i'm going to clean the crap out of all this with a little bit of vinegar i would advise keeping your o-rings away from vinegar because i don't know exactly what they're made out of i would use only gentle soap on the o-rings um just a word of warning because i don't know what's gonna happen anyways i'm gonna go and clean all this and then i will bring you guys back with everything else and we'll go from there okay so at this point i washed everything as good as it will get and i put all the washers back in all the o-rings so the channels are still good so the block is still usable as you can see though it took off the nickel plating it's all gone Exposed copper and I put them face down with the washers pointing I mean the o-rings pointing downward to kind of train them into their new location for I don't know at least 10 20 30 minutes whatever you want to do see it's kind of staying there now the o-rings and for these I just did these as well I did those first it's kind of stuck already look I'm lifting it and it's kind of stuck together but you put all the Irving's back, but there's the damage. I'm not sure if my my water flow meter will spin properly anymore. But you just put them all together, put all the rings in there, and I put the metal plate back on top to give the rest of the layers some pressure. So it's all kind of compacting all the O-rings at this point. And from here on out, I'm just gonna work backwards. I'm gonna go four, three, two, one. And if you have any questions on like how the layout was, just go a little bit back in the video and you'll be able to see and I cleaned these guys out as best as I could. And they're still kind of crap. I don't know. Oh yeah, and I found out that that little sensor piece that I pulled out, it was for the emergency shutdown in case you have a water leak next to your inlet and outlet on the CPU block. But I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and I'll come back and start putting it together. Okay, so now we're putting it back together. Step one, I sadly can't show you because I needed both hands to do this, but just as you saw in the last video, I had the metal plate and I had one acrylic piece and I had the other acrylic piece over here on this side, just like this, right? You put all the wiring down, you put the, the LED light in, you put the two water sensors down, you put the, you feed that wire through that hole, you just kind of cram everything back into here, and then you flip this other piece right on top. And when you do it correctly, you should have almost no gap there, like it's touching. So that's how you know you did it correctly. And then from here, let me focus back. From here, we're going to work backwards, four, three, two, one. So I'm going to put those screws through, but they're not going to do anything. 
because at the same time, while I'm holding all this together, none of this is screwed together. While you're holding this together, you have to make sure you put these back underneath in the right places and put those screws through them. That's pretty much the only way. Actually, no, wait. I think I got this incorrectly. Yes, I did get it incorrectly. Good, good thing I stopped myself. These screws go through the metal plates. Those screws go through these, through this layer, right? That's the way it goes. Because you can have those screws right there. Yeah, you do it this way. And then you work backwards and the next one is going to be when I put the acrylic piece back on. So right now I'm going to screw all this in and then I'll take you back. Okay, so if you would have done it correctly, you would have something like this. You have these two inlet and outlet o-rings, that guy right there, this this one around the flow meter. And the back should look like this. It should have these two blocks on. And that can still remain open. Actually, I think you can actually fill this up at this point if you want to. For this guy... Got it. You're going to need this piece. Slots in there like that. Then the actual CPU block, you have to make sure that it stays vertical with it. So if you put it like this, you're going to be kind of wasting everything because the water is going to flow sideways. Just make sure you put it like that. And as you can see, my CPU block also has its O-ring. And you can go ahead and tighten it down right here at this point. So during this stage, you can actually tighten this. No, you can't tighten it down. I just realized uh, if you look through the hole, there's no threads. So it's going to be at a later stage. So I'm going to pull this out as well. But that is at a later point. See what happens when you try to get ahead of yourself. Number four was only these. Obviously, that goes a lot later. So we're just going to follow the steps. That was step four. We're going to move to step three from here and get more of it put back together. Okay, so at this point we just finished stage three. The water block is put together. Make sure you put the flow meter back in. This is what it should look like. One, two, three, four, five of the screws. Same thing here for stage three. This portion is done. It's put together. That's there. And at this point we're gonna move down to station two that we did earlier. Let me get that. Number two is really easy. The four screws, two of the ones on the right or long to the ones on the left or short it's gonna screw together like that and bam it's something starting to look familiar now so I'm gonna put this together and then I'm gonna flip it over and then we're gonna go back to stage one and we're gonna finish this off okay so we're at the final stage we came back all the way down to one here's a little bit Phoenix piece I was talking about so what you want to do is take the sensor you kind of shove it down right there it's got to go flat see that it's got to go flat and then that tab, right, right up here, it gets shoved underneath that. So what you want to do is you want to shove it underneath. And then this will go flat. So recap, that tall portion gets shoved underneath that portion down there. And then the small flap, when you put the CPU block on, I mean the, the part that's got the fins on it, it'll clamp it right here. We have to make sure that it sits like that. And I need both hands to do this. So I'm going to do this portion. Then I'm going to put the actual, um, the final block on. I'll put all the screws on. And then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And there we have it, guys. So I put that last piece back on. Exactly how we took it apart. Used up all the screws. I have no remaining screws. All the O-rings are on. The block is ready to go. So it's that simple. You can actually apply this method to anything of which I'm going to be doing both my 1080 Ti Poseidons with a cat because yeah whatever that Primo Chill crap was screwed up my fluid so now I gotta take apart both of these cards and do the exact same process as I did to the to the monoblock so thanks for sticking by I guess now you know how to do this and you can take this knowledge I hope you learned something and hopefully if you ever have any water block issues in the future you can apply this method or technique to anything else and hopefully if I did something wrong or you know of a better way let me know because I didn't see any manuals or any instructions or how to's on how to do this with this particular block so I decided to make this video to help out anyone who is in need of some maintenance on their Maximus 9 Extreme water block but once again this can be done with anything and I hope you learned something I had fun if you liked it give it a like if you don't, tell me I suck and dislike the video. I really don't care.
but I'm going to get to work on these guys. I don't have much time. Today is January 1st, 2018. I want to do some gaming, and my computer needs to go back where it belongs. Oh, yeah. And there's the Maximus 9 Extreme board with liquid metal. Oh, yeah. Um, I need to, I took most of it off, but I need to reapply that. And 64 gigs of Trident Z3200. There it is. 3264 GTZR. I wasn't kidding. But yeah, that's my rig. I need some help, but once again, thanks for sticking by, and I'll, I'll definitely see you guys next time.